just lift your hands where you are. He's alive. He's risen. He's not dead. He's risen. And all the glory to His name. Wave your hands to Him and bless Him. Wave your hands. In the mode of worship, wave your hands and just magnify Him in your own words. Magnify Him in your own language. Bless the risen King. Bless the reason, King. So bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship His only name. Sing like never before. I can't hear you. Oh my said sing like never before worship his own bless the Lord sing bless the Lord new matek sing it to him worship his holy name give you 60 seconds open your mouth and render words of worship of adoration to him you have to say something to him there has to be something that you can say to this God there has to be something you can say to him open your mouth and bless his name open your mouth and magnify his name I know a God whose mercy full and kind faithful and gracious I'm the apple of his eyes the stuff that fills his heart every morning, noon and night he Patiently like a running up into his hand. Say, look how he turned my life around. Maybe he's loaded to me. Strings and the voices. I will worship him forever. Your voice and say, I
your hands and bless him today what a glorious day what an awesome meeting you're just too good Lord we bless you you're just too good and we love you we bless you come on worship him in your own words I can't hear you. Lift your voice, magnify his name. Don't let the instruments do it for you. Worship him, bless him. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares. Father, we bless you tonight. Thank you for your presence. Thank you because you are risen. And because you are alive, we have hope. We celebrate you this Easter Sunday as a house of faith. We bless you. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for the gift of life, for the gift of salvation, for the gift of your spirit. We thank you for the gift of good men and women. We thank you for this house. We thank you for every great thing that you have done because all that you have done is good. We love you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. The Bible says the entrance of his word giveth life. And it giveth understanding. In him was life and that life was the light of men. We are going to pray this afternoon. And ask that the Lord will open our eyes to the light of his word. Can I tell you something about light? Before we pray, science has proven to us that there are two kinds of energy that light supplies. The first energy is light to see. The second one is heat. Every light force carries heat. And heat is the energy that is used to convert materials from one form to another. So the light that will come to you today is not only going to open your understanding... But it's going to empower you. It's going to convert the state of your soul. And transform you to a higher dimension of glory. You can say amen better. Amen. Now I want you to lift your voice in 120 seconds. And ask the Lord to open your eyes this afternoon. Ask for understanding. Ask for illumination. It is your word that transforms me. It is your word that changes me. I can't hear you pray. Come on. This is a house of prayer. Raise your voice and pray. Raise your voice. Raise your voice. Light by the power of your word. Light by the power of your word. Come on, 
Men rehete kesi barahata shahabrata bilahata man. Come on, somebody pray. Somebody raise your voice. Light that transforms. Light, light your darkness. <laughs> In Jesus name we pray while you're standing we'll read two scriptures and then we will sit down Psalms 118 verse 17 Psalms 118 verse 17 two scriptures and then we will sit down Psalms 118 verse 17 at the count of three we can read it on the screen one two three I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. John 10, verse 10. John 10, verse 10. John 10, verse 10. John 10, verse 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Read together from this point, one to go. I have come that they may have life. Father, speak to us through the power and the light of your word. Let us be changed. Let us be empowered. Let every yoke be broken. Let burdens be lifted. Let the sick be healed. And let your people be blessed. In Jesus' name. Be seated. God bless you. Welcome to Pneumatic. Let me briefly share on what I title Dominion Over Debt. That's the message for tonight, Dominion Over Debt. He is Lord. He is Lord. Amen. He has risen from the dead. He is the Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ.
resurrected king and he's resurrected everything that is dead in your life everything that has died in your life is coming back tonight it's coming back alive tonight lift your voice and say ay 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 Because he's alive, you are alive. Because he lives, you will live also. Let me prophesy over you before we get to the word tonight. Anything that is dead in your life, anything that has defied every circumstance before now, by the power of him that rose from the dead, it is coming back alive tonight. I don't care whether it's your finance, I don't care whether it's your business, I don't care whether it's your career, your academics, your job, your family, your loved ones, anything that has been dead, tonight is coming back alive by the power of Jesus. Come and scream that amen one more time. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I pray. That what I will share tonight by the help of the Holy Spirit will bless someone. Someone will catch light this evening. In the name of Jesus. One of the most difficult things to preach about is death. Because humanly speaking it looks like there is no solution to death. We can have faith to pray for the sick. We can have faith to believe God for financial resources, material resources. We have faith for almost anything. But the law of death seems to still reign in the life of many believers. And you see, anything in your life that seems to defy the power that is in the name of Jesus is not because that thing is stronger than that name. It is only because there is an amount of the revelation of that name that you need to have that will bring down the dominion of this limitation that has existed a full time in your life what i mean is that there is a revelation from the lord that you must receive about that situation that dethrones that situation in your life and exalts the name of jesus because your faith is built on an understanding hebrews 11 verse 3 says by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god so your faith is built up by an understanding that you receive from the word of god faith is not wish wish is not as powerful as faith i'm telling you if faith was the same as wish there was no need for jesus to die because now everything that we can receive by reason of the death and the resurrection of Jesus is on the platform of faith. So faith is more powerful than wishes. Faith is a reality. It is more real than even the things around you. So much so that the scripture there says that so we will know that the things that are seen were not made by things that are invisible. In other words, God does not need 
a physical substance to recreate a miracle in your life god does not need human aid human help god does not need a raw material the only raw material he needs is your faith that understands that he is able to do what he says he will do am i talking to somebody here and as soon as your faith is anchored by on a revelation that you have received on an understanding that you have received from the word of god then you will understand and believe and experience that scripture that says to him that believes all things are possible you know in matthew jesus said with god all things are possible but in mark chapter 9 verses 23 i believe he says that to him that believes all things are possible amen so god's intention for us was that we will live and that we will live forever from the very point of creation god had no place for death there is no way that god will create death when he is the god that is alive and has never known death before he has existed from eternity's past and even till eternity he remains god and so it's important to know that when god created man he had in his heart that man will exist and live continually like him there was no place for death in fact if you read in genesis chapter 1 when god was instructing adam in verse 29 and 30 god gave provision for food he did not give provision for medicine that means there was no plan for sickness is that what he says there but somewhere along the line death came into the equation and i want to run through from that point so that we can all understand because it is possible to have dominion over death it is possible to drive back the hands of death it is possible to defy the law of death are you hearing me jesus in his own words said in john chapter 11 in verse 23 24 and 25 i believe he says i am the resurrection and the life verse 25 and 26 rather he says he that believes in me though he were dead yet he shall live but the next part of that verse is more interesting he says and he but he that believes in me and lives it's one thing to believe in him and it's another thing to choose to live or die are you hearing what i'm saying what did he say will happen to that one that believes in him and lives he say he shall never die I don't care what your what you think i don't care your opinion or i don't care what anybody says jesus is the way the truth and the life if he says it i believe it if jesus says he that believes in me and lives shall never die it is the truth even if somebody died in your house this morning it remains the truth is that true so from genesis we discover that god never created death never had any intention for death in genesis chapter 2 the bible told us in verse 7 that god formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils and man became a living being in verse 17 and 18 i believe god gave instructions to adam he said the day that you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you will die the death that god was talking about was not physical death which is cessation of existence no the death that god was talking about was separation from life life in this context is god because john chapter 1 verse 4 says in him was life so god was telling adam that the day you eat of this tree you have declared independence from me and because i am life i am the very source of life the moment you declare independence from me you have been separated from me and then you are dead so we see that when adam ate the fruit he did not fall down and die he was still living but he had become separated from god 
I want to show you something interesting in that Genesis chapter 3. Can we do some Bible studies today? All right. And then we'll pray. Genesis chapter 3 verse 17. Then to Adam. Notice he didn't say to man. Then to who? Adam. The word Adam means et. Red et. In other words, this statement that God was going to make, God was speaking to the body. The body man. Not the spirit man. By this time, <laughs> my God, this would this will twist us a little bit, but just listen, you will understand. Now, you know, in Genesis chapter 1, leave the scripture there. I will come back there. In Genesis chapter 1, in verse 26, God created man. 26 and 27. The Bible says in verse 27 that as so God created man in his image and after his likeness. Male and female, he created them. And he blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and all of that. But in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, the Bible says that the Lord God formed man. In chapter 1 verse 27, he says God created man. In chapter 2 verse 7, he says God formed man the lord god he didn't say god the lord god so chapter one is creation of purpose chapter two is formation of existence the man that was created in chapter one was existing in the spirit realm because god is spirit and in chapter one of genesis in verse 26 he said he will create him in his image the image of god is spirit are you hearing what I'm saying? So in chapter 2, God now formed the body. Now God's intention was that after he had formed the body of man, breathed into that man and that man became a soul living in a body. Because the breath of God that came into that man was not the, ma the spirit that God had created in chapter 1. No. That was the reason why in the center of the garden there were two trees. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. And it was only the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that God said do not eat. Is that true? That means God intended them to eat from the tree of life. If you don't believe me, what did Jesus tell them in John chapter 6 verse 35 and in verse 48? He said, I am the bread of life. Didn't he tell them in that chapter that he that eats of me. Is that not true? Are you here at all? Okay. So, I, I need, I, I want to, I just, I need to start from there so we can catch, we can get the whole sequence together. So, God had not finished, He had not perfected the creation of man before man ate that fruit. The body was there, the soul was there. It was time for the spirit to come into that body. So that he can become the man that is in the image and likeness of God. And just before that will happen, man ate of the fruit. And that stopped the spirit from entering into that body. And so the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 where we are reading now. To Then to Adam. So that means the spiritual dimension of man was not involved in that equation. Are you hearing me? He said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it. Cost is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For dust you are. And to dust you shall return. Now can I say something here? If the ground was cursed. And today. This cursed ground. Is blessing us like this. Is as productive as this. 
Imagine what would have happened if the ground was not cursed. Let me try again. Many of you, your mind is not here. You're, you are somewhere. Let me try again. Let's reason together. If the ground that we are on now was cursed, as we saw in the Bible, and yet this ground is as productive as it is today. Do you know how productive the earth is? There's crude oil there. There's gold there. There's silver there. Many of you, you know how famine blossoms in your village. Yet it is to a cursed earth. Imagine what will happen if the earth was not cursed. Maybe we would have been picking gold on the, on the floor. And I give you a good news. I bring you a good news. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 65 and in Revelation chapter 21, God promises us of a new earth that he will create. I want to be in that earth, I tell you the truth. I wonder how productive that earth will be. I don't think you will need to sow into that earth. Things will naturally grow on it. Are you here? So that you don't miss your you don't miss heaven. Tell your neighbor you must not miss heaven. Yeah, because the only way you can be in that new earth is when you have been raptured to heaven first. All right? But we don't have time for that. He said, Till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Now God cannot talk to the spirit of a man and say, To dust you shall return. He was talking to the body. Because in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, that body was formed from the dust of the ground. And so from that time, death entered, in, entered into this world. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in verse 56, I want to show you something very interesting there. It said, the sting of death is sin. Look up, everybody, look on the screen. It said, the sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. The sting of death is sin. I want you to think about that sentence. The sting of death is sin. Does this sound correct? Talk to me now. Does this sound correct? Think about it. Think about it. The sting of death. Is the sting that will kill you now, She? Now the Bible is saying... What would have been the sting? The Bible is now saying is what has a sting. The sting of death is sin. I thought it should have been the sting of sin is death. Is it not written in your Bible, Romans chapter 6 verse 23, that the wages of sin is death? So let's come back to this scripture now. It said the sting of death is sin. I think the Bible would have been correct if he had said the sting of sin is death. Because the soul that sinneth shall what? Die. Somebody say, I love the word of God. You see, I pity Christians who don't like Bible studies, who don't like the word. You'll miss a lot of revelation. All right? The understanding to this scripture is that First of all, don't look at that death there as a man falling down to die. Look at that death as what happened to man when he ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What happened to him? He was separated. So if you understand this death here as separation from God, then it will make sense when it says the sting of death is sin. Meaning when a man has been separated from God, sin comes into the equation. Because the reason why a man can live above sin and walk in holiness is because he's separated unto God. He's joined to God. But when a man is separated from God, the sting of death becomes sin. Because the moment man was separated from God after eating of that tree, sin came into the equation. And I will show you scriptures right now. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Romans 
chapter 5. Apologies, I'm opening my old Bible. So, Romans chapter 5, from verse 12. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sin for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law nevertheless death reigned from adam to moses even over those who had not seen according to the likeness of the transgression of adam who is a type of him who was to come but the free gift is not like the offense for if by the one man's offense many died look at this Offense there is talking about what? Sin. It's talking about disobedience. Because one man rebelled against God. One man declared independence against God by eating of that tree. The Bible says what happened as a result? It says death. Right? For if by the if by the one man's offense many died. It didn't say if by death many offended no if by one man's offense many died so that best helps you to understand what corinthians says when he says the sting of death is sin when one man declared independence from god that was the offense there from that time death came in death there is separation from god and as soon as man was separated from god sin followed so man could no longer carry a holy nature because he had been disconnected from God. He had been cut off from God. So sin became a law. I don't have time to take you through Romans chapter 7. Sin became a law in the flesh of men. That's the reason why no matter how you try, you must make mistakes. You know why? Because your humanity, there is a law at work. And there's only one thing you can do against a law or you can do towards a law obey it if you try to walk against the law it will fight you a law is meant to bring subjugation and control a law is meant to bring dominion over something so from that time the law of sin came in so it became difficult for man to be good all through it became difficult for man to be righteous according to god's standard Now write this down. The end of all things is death. Having said all of this, this is how man was separated from God. Sin came into the world. And from that time, people began to die. So write that down. The end of all things is death. That be, that's a fact, number one. Fact number two, death is the door. To another life. Death is the door to life. So those of you who did mathematics, you remember what they call that equation. Equation 1, equation 2. What's, what do you call it? Simultaneous. Is it qu qu what? Qu qu what? Quadratic. That's why the equations are already always quarreling themselves. Quadratic. Qu quarrel. So look at fact number 1 and fact number 2. The end of all things, the end of all life is death. And then number 2. Death is the door to life. That between, from the time man was pushed out of the garden, sin became a nature in man. And so from that time, people began to die. Everything began to die. The death now is not separation from God. Because they've already been separated from God. That means that we are dealing with two deaths here. 
The first death was that man was separated from God. The second death is cessation of existence. That people will live to a point and then go extinct. Is that true? However, when men die, it doesn't mean that's the end of that man. The Bible speaks of a man that will gain the whole world and lose his soul. So dying in this realm opens a door to another realm. So though the end of all life is death, yet that death that we think is an end becomes a means to another end. Are you following me here? That other end now is the life that never ends. Those who are born again spend it with Jesus Christ in eternity. Those who are not born again they are sent to hell and they are destroyed with the devil. So between this death now, physical death I'm talking about, and the life that is entered into, so it's like a tunnel. It's like a tunnel now. On one end here, yeah, on the first opening here, yeah, you have death. You live, you grow to a level and die. That is it, isn't it? So to you now, physically, that is an end. But imagine a tunnel, and the opening of that tunnel is death. So you didn't die to cease existing. You died to continue existing in another realm. So, But it's like a tunnel. You are moving from one end of the tunnel to the other end. This end here, you have death. On this other end here, you have everlasting life. Life that never ends. Between this end, death, and this end, life that never ends, there is a hollow, there is a corridor. That corridor is what I call resurrection. So resurrection is the bridge with, between death and life. That means that for you to transit from death into life, you must experience resurrection. And Jesus, when he came, he said, I am the resurrection. I am the bridge between one end and the other. I'm the one that made what was supposed to be an end become a means to another end. Before the coming of Jesus Christ, when men grow old and die, that was the end. But when Jesus came, he became a bridge. He introduced something called resurrection. That a man can die. But then, how, how can something that is already dead and decaying all of a sudden be resuscitated to life again? And this time around, a more qualitative life. Brothers and sisters, that's what we call resurrection. That's what we are celebrating. The problem with Christians is that we celebrate what we don't know. Jesus said, you worship whom you do not know. And that's why all the time they were worshipping on that mountain, they did not see any glory. Because they were worshipping who they did not know. Jesus said, but we know whom we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Why were the Jews worshipping? In the temple. And that was why God decided that his name would be placed in that temple. And there he will reveal himself. So it's one thing to say resurrection, resurrection is another thing to understand what resurrection is. So that you know that resurrection is not only when a person falls down dies and all of a sudden comes back to life again. Resurrection is a law that we experience every day. That law, I call it the law of the spirit of life. Romans 8 verse 1, it said, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. So the law of sin makes you die when you sin you will die of course all that's why all men die that's why all life die because of sin that is in the nature of man but the bible says there is another law called the law of the spirit of life also known as resurrection it said this law has set me free so that you are alive because of sin certain things around you die but when the law of resurrection has been introduced 
things begin to come alive. So, resurrection is not only when somebody falls down and dies and then all of a sudden comes back. No, that is possible. That is one aspect of it. But there is another aspect of it where though you are alive, but things around you are dead, you can have life again. They can have life again and live. Even science has told us that as you are sitting down looking at me now, watching online or, or, or following here now, do you know that there are cells that are dying inside of you right now? And as they are dying, they are being replaced by living cells. That means as you are listening to me now, resurrection is happening in you. That is biologically. How much more spiritually? If you are with me, say amen. amen. So we find two laws. The law of death. Like I told you, number one, I said the end of all things is death. That is a law. It's appointed unto man once to die, isn't it? But then number two, I told you that death is the door to another life. So we have two laws here we are dealing with. The law of death and the law of the spirit of life. Which I call resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15. The, the scripture that gives us the revelation of resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15. From verse 20. It's a long reading but I'll just break them in sequence. From verse 20. But now Christ is risen from the dead. And has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man. If you have a King James or New King James Bible. This word man is written with small letter M. Yes or no? Huh? Put it on New King James. Because I'm reading from my Bible. So let's put it on New King James. Aha. Uh -huh. gives, gives it to you correctly there. For since by man came death. The man, the first man there is small letter. That's Adam. By man, capital letter. That is the last Adam, Jesus Christ. Do we understand? So you replace it. So where you see the small letter M is Adam. Where you see the big letter M is Christ. Isn't it? Now, if you are born again, you are a product of the big letter M, Christ. Are you hearing me? So let's continue now. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so, you know, it didn't say all die, it say all die. John 3, 3 verse 6, uh, 5 rather, 6 rather, he said that which is born of the flesh is flesh. In other words, every unbeliever is a descendant of Adam, their flesh, they will what? Die. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And the spirit here is Christ Jesus himself. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order. Christ the first fruits. Afterward those who are Christ at his coming. Then the end. Then comes the end when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father. When he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is what? For he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is evident that he who put all things under him is accepted. Now when all things are made subject to him, then the Son Himself shall also will also be subject to Him who put all things under Him, that God may be all in all. Verse 35, from verse 35 now. But someone will say, How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Foolish one. What you sow is not made alive unless it dies. Did you get that? You now see why equation one, I said... The end of all life is what? Death. And equation 2, I said, death is what? The door to another life. So you see what it's explaining here in this verse. 
So for what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. And what you sow, you do not sow. You do not sow that body that shall be, but mere grain, perhaps wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he pleases, and to each seed its own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. Okay, let's jump to verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. In other words, the Bible has explained to us now that for you to enter into the greater life, you must die first. Death now becomes the access. Now he begins to explain the principle of resurrection. That the body is sown in corruption. Corruption there means death. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body. And there is a spiritual body. And so it, it is written. The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord, made from heaven. So let's stop here. We are going to read on, but let's stop here. The next thing that we are seeing is the explanation of resurrection. And the Bible begins to tell us that for a man to experience resurrection, he has to go through death. There must be a dying first for something to live. So anything that wants to live must die first. That is the law of resurrection. It is Resurrection is only active on dead things. Resurrection is only active on a dead person, on a dead individual. So if you want to experience resurrection, and resurrection was the power that the dead body of Jesus experienced that brought it back to life. Nobody went to pray on Jesus' grave and say, come back to life. No. Every other person that came back to life, they were restored back to life. Someone had to call them back. Because that's a law in this physical realm, in this territory, this earthly territory. Anything that must come to this earth must be invited or summoned by something that inhabits this earth. So when Elijah raised the widow's son, he was a living being. He was on earth. So he called the soul of the boy back to the body. That is not resurrection. When Elisha raised the Shunammite woman's son, he called the soul of the boy back to his body. That is not resurrection. That is restoration. He restored the soul back to the body. The guy still died later. Every other miracle of somebody coming alive, you find before Jesus died, was not resurrection. It was restoration. It was when Jesus died. Nobody went to the grave and said, Jesus, come back. Nobody held any vigil. In fact, the disciples, they scattered. Nobody, they couldn't pray. They were had broken. There was no prayer anywhere. The Bible says on the third day, there was an earthquake. And the, the stone that was closing, the, the sealing the grave, you know, shook off and went one way. And Jesus, a dead body, came back to life. That was the first time it happened. That is resurrection. That one, nobody called him back to life. Nobody prayed him back to life. He came back. So, anybody that must experience that dynamic power. And can, you, can I tell you something? The reason why the devil was defeated in resurrection was, just, was because all the while Satan was working with God as Lucifer. He had understood many of the dynamics of the power of God. He even understood creation. He understood many things about God. That was why he decided to rebel against God. That was why he decided to rebel against God. He felt he had known everything, all the secrets of God, he had known it. Yet he didn't know that God had kept the secrets and the mystery of resurrection from him. That was why he introduced sin into mankind. Hoping that through sin, when man dies, that's the end of man. That was why when Jesus died, Satan was rejoicing. 
The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 53, it says, He shall see the travail of his soul and be satisfied. Because when Jesus died, he, he went to hell. First Peter chapter 3, verse 18. He went to hell and preached to those who were dead, those who had died in the old testament, and their souls were locked up in prisons in hell. He went there and preached to them. They believed in him as Jesus, as Lord. And then they received the gift of righteousness. And then the Bible says that he triumphantly took the keys of hell and death. And he resurrected from that place. Satan never knew there was something called resurrection. In all his time being around God in heaven, he never thought there was something called resurrection. So when Jesus rose on the third day, it was a mystery that shattered the kingdom of darkness. That's why the stone rolled away. They put soldiers there. What you didn't see, it were demons that were there. They didn't understand it. He, he couldn't fathom me. He never thought, he thought that a God had said it. It is appointed once for man to die. So to Satan, the end of all life was what? Death. That was equation one. But God pocketed equation two and left him. How else? Don't, do, don't you think, you know, sometimes <laughs> those days when we used to play football, there's a kind of game we used to play. We'll play defensive and allow the other people to press us, press us, attack, attack. When we have drawn everybody from their, uh, from their place out, even their defenders are out. Then when somebody, one of the defenders just gets the ball, he just, he, we call it true pass. He just gives a true pass. Then one of, one of the strikers from the other team is already ahead. He with the keeper, one-on-one. I know there are some footballers that don't miss one-on-one. Abi. Then all of a sudden they turn back and discover our striker is there. And we give them one goal. When we see that we are winning one, then we play defensive and block the place. There was one coach they called Moreno. Is that true? That's his game. He, he doesn't care who wins most valuable player, golden boot. He doesn't care about that. His own is to win. So if you score one goal, it's enough. He will play defensive every year. That was what God did with Satan. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, Satan looked like he was winning. The Bible says there was even darkness. Jesus cried out. He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken? Jesus, Satan was laughing through the Pharisees and the scribes. He felt that the end of the hope of man had come to an, you know, it, it had come. But he never knew that death was a passage to another life. Because the law of resurrection is introduced. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. That's why it says the spiritual is not first. The natural first. After the natural, the spiritual. He said that even this your body is sown in corruption. But is raised in incorruption. In other words, your loved ones that may have died. It was a sad moment for you. You cry. But if they were born again before they died. I came to tell you that they didn't die. They slept. Psalms 116 verse 15 He said precious in the sight of the Lord Is the death of his saints It's unbelievers that die Believers don't die, they sleep Give it to me New Living Translation New Living Translation New Living Translation Let me show you something there He said the Lord cares deeply When his loved one dies i wish we had the living bible he said the lord does not take lightly the death of his so when an unbeliever dies that one is death that's the end but when a believer dies it's not death we call it passing on to glory it's transition they slept because the bible says the natural must be sown you now see why this law of sowing and reaping is a powerful law it's not only for money. So for a man to experience resurrection on the last day, he will have to sow this body to the ground first. So that when Jesus comes, he can be resurrected. That's why it says that the corruption must be sown. The body is sown in corruption so that it is raised in incorruption. It says it is sown in dishonor and it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. 
That's why when you fast, your body seems very weak. It's as though you will die. But that is a seed you are sowing. When you sow in that weakness, the glory of God breaks out from your spirit. Power comes out from within you. That's the reason why fasting routes you into the power and the grace of God. Because for anything to experience the greater life, it must what? Die. Are we, are we getting it? The Bible says, I reckon that the sufferings of now are not worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed. So every time you go through stuff, you suffer. You are going through situations. What you are going through is equal to death according to you. In fact, something has been telling you, kill yourself. Kill yourself. Kill yourself. Just end it. Just jump on that Lagos bridge and that's the end. But I came to I bring I bring you a word. What you are going through is the process that will make you touch resurrection and break into a higher life. So you may be broke today, but there are riches ahead of you tomorrow. You may be sick today, but you are going to be the one that God will use to heal others. You may be down today. The Bible says, when men say there is a casting down, you shall say what? If not for the principle of resurrection, that scripture is wrong. Because for you to go up, you must go down. So when you see God allowing you to go through stuff, He's working on you. That's why I like that song that, that dear lady sang. So I'll cry out from my pain And I'll let you have your way For it is well With my soul this is not the end, no, oh no. You're only turning me to go. It is well with my soul. These days, I don't know. <laughs> there are some music ministers, I don't know what they are singing these days. I like listening to songs that carry revelation. That song is is like someone going through stuff that is the confession of a man that is going through pain he's saying from my pain i will cry out and i'll still let you have your way because i know that this pain will not kill me it is only give, making me qualified a candidate to experience resurrection and break into another life he said this is not the end no this is the process that turns me into gold because for gold to be gold it must go through the fire job 23 verse 10 he said for he knows the way that i take though he said when when i when i have come forth when he has tested me i will come forth as gold when he has tried me so some of you what you are going through now is what is, 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 is the engineering of resurrection to break into another side of life. There is glory ahead of you. Don't give up. There is grace ahead of you. God, the Bible says, He lifts the poor from the dust and the needy from the dunghill and He sets Him among the princes of His people. That's the God that we serve. So stop crying and start praising. And even if you will have to cry, let your cry become praise and worship to him. A funny story. Three years ago, somebody bought me a phone. Four years rather. I had no phone that time. I had been without a phone for a while. So I was at home one day. Of course, very broke that time. And then somebody came to the house, called me, said, are you at home? I said, yes. Then brought a brand new phone to me. I said, ah, now so it be. I was just studying my Bible and they just brought a brand new. Nobody used it. They bought it from the shop that day and brought it. I said like that. When I checked the receipt, it was 60 something thousand that time. I said, wow. So that phone became my angel. I was just so compassionate about it everywhere. And when God saw that I had become too attached to that phone, death. You understand? So in March 2020, I went somewhere. Okay, I was going somewhere. And when I came down, I left the phone in a napep. And as soon as the napep zoomed off, I remembered the phone. That was I just I was just looking at the napep going at a distance. 
This is not the end, no, no. Then don't take my phone, they go. <laughs> you know what? But God, I had died to a level. I had died to self to that to a level. One of my friends came. He, he said, oh, we'll go to crack. We'll go. They even called me. I said, forget it. We went that day. Did a welcome back. I, it, it wasn't my business again. I had died to that. Two days later, somebody had given me a torchlight that same Monday evening. And so the torchlight was not charged, so it was off. And that period, there was no light. And it was heat. So for two days, I was at home quarantined. No phone, no light. Inside heat. So I cry out from my pain. I was just praising God there. On Wednesday, when I was able to power the phone, I saw a message. I called the person. The person said, Apostle, I've been trying to reach you for a few days now. I can't get you. I said, yeah. They stole my phone and all of that. I said, a phone? I said, Apostle, wait. There's this phone I bought a week ago. And as soon as I bought it, I hated it. So I just kept it in the pack. I think that phone is for you. I said, yes. <laughs> Indeed. And that's the phone I'm using till today. Somebody told me, buy iPhone. I say for why? Until this one off. <laughs> Die. Yes, why should I buy? Because the principle of death and resurrection must happen. If this one not die, I can't get another one. See, the reason why... <laughs> are you, are you, do you understand this? Uh-huh. So I go use a motility pack. Just the way some of you who are trekking now, this is your, you are, you, you are, you are dying. And your resurrection is preparing you for a car that when you start driving that car, people will say, Are you hearing what I'm saying? The money that you'd have used to buy an iPhone, God says you should give it to church projects. Your friends thought you were a fool, don't worry. It's called resurrection. When God arrives on your behalf, Are we blessed already? Well, let's go on. The story gets more interesting. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. You see? So anything that doesn't die cannot experience the life after. The greater life, the life of God. He said, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. I told you that when a believer dies, he slept. Right? In fact, let's stop here. I want to show you something. Isaiah 57 verse 1 to 2. I got this scripture from a man of God who lost his wife. And the day he lost his wife, that morning when he woke up, before the wife passed away, this was the scripture he woke up with. The righteous perishes and no man takes it to heart. Merciful men are taken away while no one considers that the righteous is taken away from evil. Next verse. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. And he didn't know why that scripture came to him. That was his memory verse that day. Hours later, he lost his wife. Then it now dawned on him that the righteous are taken away from evil. So some of your loved ones who love the Lord and still die. It's not like God could not heal them. But maybe there was a trap that Satan had laid ahead of them. That would have made them backslide. They would have backslided and died unbelievers. And the Bible says, what shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So which one is better? That the person dies physically as an exchange for eternity with God. Or that the person keeps living and then misses his steps and falls into sin and goes to hell. Which one is better? Which one is better? Uh -huh. That was why when my mother died, I didn't cry. I wish you had done this song by that time. That's what I would have been singing. In fact, the day we were burying her, I was prophesying to somebody at the graveyard. 
the, putting her into the casket where all there I stood I was just watching her I was in peace I couldn't explain it some people came and said it's bold face I looked at them and laughed that was when I knew I, that was when I knew and understood the life that I was carrying that was when I knew I was born again it was difficult to cry I was just it, to me there was nothing there these scriptures I was reading to you was just playing in my head that the body is sown into corruption and raised in incorruption if Jesus stories we all will go that way so while they were there people were crying I looked at, at a young man and I saw a name written on his head bah! and then I went and called the guy I say who is so so person he says me and I took him one side Barry had a go on I began to prophesy to him you know what a few months after that prophecy took him from that village out but who are we burying well I'll see her when we when we get to heaven I will and in fact I know she's there praying for me because the Bible says we are surrounded with so great a cloud there is no the only thing separating us from them is time in fact, do you know that every time we worship in this place, the spirits of just men who have died, they are here. The limitation of this earth is broken. Time is broken. And then this family here, because the church of God is not only you and I, even the saints in heaven. He said the church of the firstborn, the spirits of just men made perfect. We fuse with them. So some of you that lost your mother, your father, every time you worship, do you know that you, you have you have entered into a place where they are there with you and the worship is going on heaven and earth has kissed together there's no difference and if you understand the the principle of the glory of god and begin to walk with god a time will come where while that worship is going on you can step into eternity and discuss with them and step out into this realm it's possible we are celebrating resurrection resurrection is not what god brought to us jesus said i am the resurrection and the life there's a higher dimension can we stop here huh you said no with your mouth but your mouth, your heart said behold i tell you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye look at that what kind of speed is that everybody blink your eye once the bible says that's how this your body will be changed to a glorious body when jesus comes at the speed of the blink of an eye that's faster than the speed of light in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the sound of the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible this is the principle here now must go must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality in other words corruptible there is those who have died who were believers when jesus comes they will first change from their graves they will transit and the body will now become the incorruptible body from the lord he said then this mortal that is us now that are alive we too we will change this body that makes you fall into sin and mistake this body that makes you limited this body that is sick this body that suffers hunger it will change and then you will suddenly put on a body that does not know any limitation that this body knows that body does not have blood so you can't have blood disease that blood is that body is glorious so you can walk through a wall with that body when jesus raised was resurrected from the dead the bible says his disciples were in the room the doors were shut the windows were shut and jesus was in their midst he said peace be unto you and i told you that if i'm in a car that is about to have an accident and it's not my time i'll disappear because the bible says in colossians 3 verse 3 and 4 for you were dead and your life was hid with christ in god he said and christ and when christ who is our life appears he said you shall appear with him in glory that's how i know 
So if I'm in a car and accident is about to happen and I know it's not my time, my body in heaven, I will enter into it. Because the Bible says in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, I know it's not my time. So God is like a, a suit, a superhero suit. I wear it and disappear from there and appear somewhere else. No be me. I will not die in accident. The Bible says, where, where we read in Isaiah, it said, they shall sleep on their beds. Apostle, are you saying that all these great people that died in the Lord in accident, are you saying that they are not believers? They are. It's just that our understanding is different. Maybe they don't know what I know now. And I'm not joking. No. If I'm in the vehicle that should have accident, if you are there with me, just hold me. If you miss only me in the twinkle of an eye, you are, <laughs> you are there. Oh. Amen. Uh -uh. What did Archbishop Benson Idaosa know? The Sunday before the week he would die, he preached a message in his church, the benefits of death. Two weeks before that day, he called all his sons all over the world and had a meeting with them in Benin City and blessed them and did everything and sent them away. The man knew when he would die. But you see, when you know when you die, you won't die. it's not death, it's transition. The day he was going to die, he ate a good lunch and went and sat on his chair and rested his head and that was it. That one not death. What of Smith Wiggles what? Days before he died, there is a video of him and his wife. You see him looking healthy at 87. What of Moses? Moses was not sick. The Bible says at 120 years old, his eyes were not dim. The strength of when he was 40 years was still with him. God even had to tell him, God said, go to the mountain and die. Because the way you are, you pass this. Say, go there and... That is Moses' Old Testament. And the Bible says that every man before the coming of Jesus was in the likeness of Adam. He said, but after Christ, we now believers, we are in the likeness of Christ. That has a greater power. That has greater glory. Yet Moses is experiencing what you are not experiencing. Yet Elijah is experiencing what you are not experiencing. Elijah knew when he would transit to heaven. As soon as they crossed the river, they were still talking, going somewhere, turn and say, oh, yeah, ask what I will give you because I'm going now. This is what they knew. He said, this corruption will put on incorruptible and this mortal will put on immortality. But can I tell you something? By reason of your hunger for the things of the Spirit, and by reason of the revelation of the word of God that you enter into every day, you don't have to wait for when you will die before experiencing immortality. You can touch immortality even now. Because the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1 in verse 10, that the gospel that Christ brought was the gospel of immortality. Hold on. If the Bible says there is a gospel called the gospel of immortality, it means it's a message that when you believe in it, you will begin to walk in immortality. What is immortality? Immortality is life that never ends or life that is without death. Are you here? Even if it's two people that catch this revelation tonight, I'm okay. He says, so when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? So when a mortal man experiences immortality, the Bible says that is when that scripture comes to pass, that death is swallowed up in victory. That death is swallowed up in victory. So if a believer dies and when Jesus comes, he is raptured with Jesus into heaven, then we can say death is swallowed up in victory. If a believer is alive and when Jesus comes, he puts on immortality and meets Jesus in the air, 
we can say death is swallowed up in victory. How about a believer that knows he will die, kidney infection and is dying, and prayer is made on him, and that disease leaves, and he comes alive again. Death is swallowed up. Did you, you, you didn't catch it. That means he didn't have to die. Now let me show you five ways by which you can exercise dominion over death and we are done tonight. Five to six ways by which you can exercise dominion over death. Number one, your understanding. Dominion means you rule over. It means you are no longer subject to that limitation. It means you are able to defy that reality. It means that your life is a reality that is bigger than the reality of death. How do you exercise it? Number one, your understanding, which is what I've been telling you all through. If you have this kind of understanding that you are receiving now, you have exercised dominion over death. When people are in a bus and they break fail, you don't follow everybody to shout. Because it is written that this mortality shall put on immortality. So everybody is calling the name of their God. You are just there. Haven't you heard testimonies and somebody say, as we were going in the bus, a cow came out from somewhere. Something just came out and we, we, it was like we were going to hit it. And all of a sudden, we don't know what happened. Something took the cow or the car to another side of the road. And we saw ourselves at the other side. Nobody hurt. What do you think happened there? There was somebody in that bus that was clothed with immortality that you will not believe it but the bible says it is because it happens in the twinkling of an eye that kind of experience doesn't just happen that was immortality that defied the law of death so your understanding number one number two holiness your abstinence from the life in the flesh which is sin and your being separated unto god which is the Holy Spirit. Holiness. Holiness gives you dominion over death. Because when, when you live holy, you are separated unto God. You are separated unto the Holy Spirit and He is the Spirit of life. Therefore, if sin can no longer reign in your mortal body at that state, death also has no power over you. That's why the Bible says in, in James chapter 5, that if anyone is sick among you, let him call the elders of judge and let them pray for him, anoint him with oil. He says, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And if he has committed any sin, he shall be forgiven. He said, confess your fault one, with an one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. So sin, the presence of sin introduces death. But the absence of sin is life. So when a man decides to live a holy life, empowered by the holy spirit inside of him he has defied the law of death that one god will have to appoint to him a day when he will transit that one cannot just die like anybody number three obedience your dominion over death is activated through obedience when you are led by the spirit there are things the holy spirit will tell you to do that can avert death in your family the Holy Spirit can tell you to stand up for seven nights and pray, 12 to 1. And you don't know that the spirit of death has been released over your family. And by the time you finish, you discover that this one was sick, that one was sick, this one was sick. But through it all, nobody died. By your obedience to the law of the spirit of life, you have defied the dominion of death. I pray that we'll be led by the spirit. Inside and outside, I pray that at all times we'll be led by the spirit number four kingdom service that's another way by which you activate this dominion over death that the bible has explained to us <laughs> exodus 23 25 to 26 so you shall serve the lord your god and he shall bless your bread and your water and he shall take away all these sicknesses from the midst of you he said, none shall be barren among you. Right? No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. Miscarriage is a form of death. 
He said, I will fulfill the number of your days. In other words, you will not, you will not die until your, your days on earth is complete. All of this is tied to verse 25. He said, you shall serve the Lord your God. When you are under the service of the Lord God, you are under his lordship, under his dominion. Satan cannot come and snatch you by the cold hands of death. Service is what qualifies you a candidate of life. service what did what did the king was that king hezekiah second kings chapter 20 in verse 3 and 5 when isaiah told hezekiah god say you will die so put your house in order this sickness you will not recover hezekiah turned towards god he said remember how i have walked before you your service can become redemption in the day of death the problem is now your people don't want you to come to pneumatic they don't want you to walk in the house of god the day that death will visit your family what report will you have that can shut the mouth of the grave kingdom service psalms 91 verse 16 say with long life i will satisfy him and show him my salvation number five your giving and your seed can activate your dominion over death your giving your seed is it true i'll show you psalms 41 verse 1 to 3 the next time you see a poor person you want to help them when you read this scripture blessed is he who considers the poor the lord will deliver him in time of trouble the lord will preserve him and keep him alive and he will be blessed on the earth you will not deliver him to the will of his enemies who doesn't like this blessing i beg verse 3 the lord will strengthen him on the on his bed of illness that means he will recover you will sustain him on his sick bed why because of his giving giving is a very powerful tool very powerful channel there's something i call the mystery of the seed where we read in 1 Corinthians 15, 35 to 38, the Bible explained to us the mystery of the seed. 1 Corinthians 15, 35, it showed us that when a body, you say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come up? Go on. Foolish one, what you sow is not made alive unless it dies. What you sow is not made alive unless it dies. What you sow is not made alive unless it dies. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. Next verse, please. And what you sow, you do not sow that body that shall be, but mere grain. In other words, you can sow money and God will look at you and see the attack of death coming towards you. And instead of God giving you a harvest of money, he gives you life. That's the principle there. That's what I call the mystery of death. Or Roberts was sick dr ora roberts one of the greatest men of faith that has lived in our time was sick very sick he was one of the preachers of faith during his time god used him to lay hands on thousands of people heal them of all kinds of sickness a time came where he was sick and was almost dying they had prayed for him they had called great evangelists all around the world to pray for him everything had been done he was still dying he called his wife one morning he said how much do we have in the account true story the wife says so so and so he said take everything and give i need to leave the story had it that as soon as that seed was sold he mysteriously recovered so you don't uh, you don't like giving you don't like sowing seed apostle johnson suleiman i heard this testimony from his own mouth years ago he was praying and god spoke to him and said so 32,000 US dollars. Oh boy, now money be that too. Now money. That money can change your life. It's not only the word of God that can change your life. That money can change your life. 32,000 Benjamin. Are you hearing me? Huh. 32,000 dollars. He called his banker. He said, do you have that kind of money? The banker said, yes gathered everything and sold those are the kind of seed you sow and be grumbling those are the kind of seed you sow this you sow today tomorrow you have fever 
it's not fever you, you, something just left you the story had it from his own mouth he was driving one day with his police oddly hired assassins accosted them on the way they stopped their vehicle told all of them to come down they came down they cocked the gun at him and told him today is your end guess what in a few minutes confusion came among the hired assassins one of them who brought the deal he said i know this man he said sir you don't remember me he said no he said i met you at the airport sir i told you i was a student i didn't have school fees i was a student of uniben you looked for my id card too for proof and when i showed you you gave me money for my school fees you gave me extra money and gave me your number i said i should call you he said this man is too good he can't die they said no we must kill him he said no be me bring the deal now i close the deal you know they die sir enter your car and go imagine you stare death to the face and you walk out and you leave what do you think saving was it prayers no it was the power of a seed that's why when you when you when giving seeds and giving is a lifestyle what you are doing is you have raised a monument before god in heaven you are your seed has become a 10 foot wall that is surrounding you too high for the enemy of death to jump in there are people that just can't die till their time god told moses he said i will kill all these people and from you i will raise a new nation he suffered no man to do them wrong he rebuked kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed not when your life it will bring the deliverance of one thousand people not when your life will raise one million people from poverty not when your songs your messages will deliver nations no you can't die he said i shall not die but leave your giving it's a weapon in the day of adversity in the day of battle few months after my mother passed away my father suddenly took ill in all my life he has never been sick he has never been sick i have never seen him sick i thought it was a joke they called me a few days later they said he was in the hospital that he passed out he was unconscious i said what that was when I knew that Satan had come to strike again. The Bible says Herod took James and killed him. When he saw that he pleased the Jews, he took Peter. And he was going to kill him after Passover. I said, no, you took my mother, you can't take my father. I went into a dry fast, no food, only water. For two days. No scripture, just praying. If, I, if I'm not praying, I'm sleeping. When I wake up from sleep, I'm praying. I took my phone, emptied all my accounts. I said, no, I understand the principle. The Bible says that what you sow is not made alive until it dies. When I finished that two days, I, I put on my phone on the third day. They sent me a message. My father has been discharged from the hospital. He's back home. He was unconscious two days before. I'm giving you secrets this night, oh. So that the day that Satan strikes, you will not carry your phone and start looking for my number. Intelligence can tell you what to do. Are we ready to pray? Number six. The last but not the least. Another channel that gives you, that activates your dominion over death. Your confession. Your confession. Your confession. The power of faith. Your confession, your confession, your confession. Do you know this song? I speak life, you're gonna leave. Oh, my brother, my sister, I speak life. You're not the head, no, the tail, you will prevail. I speak life Don't give up the fight For your life You shall live and know I speak life again I speak life You're gonna live Oh my brother My sister I speak life You are the head and know you will prevail I speak life Don't give up the fight For your life You shall 
believe and all die. Don't give up the fight. Don't give up the fight for your life. You shall live. Sing it again. Don't give up. No. Don't give up the fight for your life. Cause you shall live and all I think this is the most powerful your confession Proverbs 18:21 Death and life is in the power of the tongue not in the power of the devil Jesus said I've taken the keys of hell and death Where did he hide the key He put it on our tongue When the doctors tell you you have kidney stones what are you saying When they tell you you have fibroid You've been operated before and now they are contemplating operation and it is three four years now no issue what do you say some of us have been so beguiled by the report of death that we we have compromised our confession and we are saying something different what do you say Jesus said in Matthew 12, 37, He said, by your words, you are justified. By your words. Not the words of a man of God. By your words. The power of a prophet over your life is words. It's true words. It's a simple thing. Everybody has given up on you. And then the prophet said, you are blessed. And introduces a higher law. Do you know that you too have that power? You know what I discovered? I've prayed for a few people who were going to die most died but a few lived and i was concerned why do they die so i went to pray and then later on god gave me this revelation and here's what god told me god said notice the confession of a person that will die few days to when they will die few hours to when they will die or few minutes to when they will die what well, all you hear them saying is dead so the reason why the person died is not because you didn't pray for them you prayed and fasted you held night vigil but by their words they called death they agreed to die there is nobody who was told that he or she would die and kept their confession of life to the point of death that didn't live your Bible is a, is a proof. Sit down and think about it. So when they tell you one of your kidneys have failed and the other one is on life, life support, is on machine, what are you saying? It happens that till your death, that that's why if Satan wants to kill a person, he brings a disease condition that shuts the mouth of the person. Or it makes them unconscious so that they cannot with their mouth because it is written I shall not die it's not a confession somebody will do for you it say I shall not die no matter how much prayer is offered what is that person saying that one that is staring death what is he saying you know why Jesus resurrected even though he will tell them that the Son of Man will be crucified and killed he will always add at the third day he will rise again had he not said that he would have died and rotten there he was going, always going to add that in fact sometimes he will add to them he say and when i'm raised up i will meet you <laughs> he will tell them i go to my father ah is the cross the way to the father the night where they will kill him he said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, you also believe in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place. Uh-uh. He knew he was going to die. But he, he understood the power of confession. That if I can say and speak life, even when I die, the body may be sold in corruption. It will be raised in incorruptible. Brothers and sisters, decide the state of your life. By the words of your mouth the more you confess the more you see bad news or you hear bad news 
keep confessing a time will come where the energy from your confession surmounts the bad news around you when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream are you ready to pray with your mouth today you are going to rebuke and reject every report of death that is around you deuteronomy 30 verse 19 he said i said before you this day life and death blessing and cursing say but i advise that you choose life that you may live choose life that you may live and what did he say that both you and your descendants so your confession today secures your future tomorrow what you say today becomes the benefit of your descendant if you kept saying i would die and you died no wonder your children will come and die young but if your confession is with long life he will satisfy me and show me his salvation then you will live up to 90 and your children will live up to 70 and your grandchildren are there your great grandchildren that's one thing I, I know about my biological father he has always confessed life his father died 106 years and they had to apologize at the burial they said they didn't calculate the age well he should have been more than that So that means I'm a career of longevity, both spiritually by my life in Christ and physically by my biological life. So if you sow into my life, you have, you have tapped into longevity. Are you hearing me? Next, when next you see this, the, the spirit of death, tell him I said that I will be here for a long time and there's nothing he can do about it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Then me, I'll not die at 35. For what? No. I've seen myself preach to whites. I've seen myself travel. I've seen myself in and out of planes. I've had visions of myself in cities that are not in Africa. And I should die now. Not lie. Last year during the spiritual warfare series, I was sick. We went to the hospital, ran all kinds of tests and scans. I ran four scans last year. Four scans. Two ultrasounds. One x-ray one city they put me on that table for more than an hour i was tired they said there's nothing in the body but i was dying i said okay thank god i now know what the problem is you people leave me leave me and my body and god this is me standing before you now who told you you would die with that sickness somebody say i have ulcer no no he say i am asthmatic hey don't say that you are committing two sins number one you are killing yourself by saying that number two which is the greater sin you are using the name of the lord in vain because the bible says you shall not use the name of god in vain and exodus 3 14 says i am that i am when you say i am asthmatic you are using his name in vain because he's not asthmatic when you say i am poor you are using the name of the lord in vain because he's not poor when you say i am down you are using the name of the lord in vain so what do you say i am rich that's why i say i am come I am come. He didn't say I have come. He said I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Tell your neighbor that you are going to be alive for a long time. It doesn't matter what the devil does. It doesn't matter the attacks that the enemy throws against you. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the righteous and those that hate the righteous shall perish are you ready i want you to lift your voice and pray in the spirit for two minutes every devil of death that is around your life around your finance around your family some of you come from families where people die every day every year i mean to say every four months somebody dies in your office it's time to shut the mouth of the grave it's time to silence the mouth of death <laughs> I speak life. 
Refuse the report of death. Refuse the report of sickness. Refuse the report of failure. I shall not die. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Come on, 
Is brother Paris here? Brother Paris, is he here? Well, I'll just pray for him from here. I was praying through the night and I had a vision. And in the vision, I stretched my hands towards him to pray for him. He was standing with his wife and he began to vomit something. I was saying that everything that God has not planted in your body be uprooted and he began to vomit. Wherever he is, I declare over his family that the attack and the sentence of death is cancelled. And by extension to every family here, every attack, every report of death that has been concluded concerning your family, maybe they have planned to eliminate them in September. They have planned that July will be the obituary. They've even planned and waited in December. I cancel it by the blood of Jesus. By the power of him that died and rose again. I declare that you shall live and not die. You shall live and not die. You shall live and not die. In the name of Jesus. I come against sickness. I come against affliction. There's a lady, you are here, you have pains around your side. You have pains around your side. Look at where I'm touching. You, you have pains. It comes and goes, but these days it has become excruciating. And it's towards the back. And so, it looks like, it, it looks like there's going to be a kidney issue. I'm seeing you right now. You are, you are not fat, you are slim. In the name of Jesus, I declare over you, that pain goes and never returns. I rebuke the spirit of affliction. I rebuke the spirit of disease. And I declare that the life of God that is immortality comes into your body. From today, live a sick, free life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak over your finances today. Every arrow of death that has been targeted towards it. Things are going down, going down, going down, going down, going down. You've made, a, you've made several losses. You can't explain what's going on. By the power of resurrection, I command your finances to be quickened. I speak life to your finances. The life that I'm speaking is the life of God. The life that is of abundance. He said, I am come that they may have life and have it in abundance. Walk into abundance from today. You know, Jesus died and rose again and has brought us salvation. It is prepared already. You don't need to do anything again. All you need to do is believe. That is what I call the prepared blessings. There is a realm called the realm of prepared blessings. In Genesis chapter 24 verse 31, he said, Oh, come in, blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside? For the house has been prepared and the stable for the animals. I speak over your lives. From today, step into the realm of prepared blessings. 
Psalms 23 verse 5 Thou preparest a table before me In the presence of my enemies From today you will not walk again Blessings that will not allow you to walk again Receive it in the name of Jesus Now understand this When I say you will not walk I'm not saying you will not go to walk There are some blessings that you will still have to walk To activate it Do you understand? Somebody say come to so so place and meet me that's blessing, but that's not prepared blessing. Prepared blessing is when they bring it to you. Prepared blessing is when you didn't apply for a job and tomorrow you get a call for an interview. Prepared blessing is when you are working in a job and they have not collected your CV. That's called prepared blessing. You see, it's strange to you because you have not seen it. Step into that realm from today. That limitation that, has, that the devil has placed around your life, I break it forever. Step into the realm of the prepared blessings in the name of Jesus. Wave your hands and give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Please, all standing everywhere, if you are here, you've heard the word, you've experienced a powerful service, but you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The Jesus you know is the Jesus they call in church. The Jesus that your family pray with at devotions. But Jesus is not yet your Lord and Savior. Wherever you are, I want you to lift up your right hand. God wants you to return to Him tonight. If you are here and you want to say yes to Jesus, or you want to re be restored again, you used to be a believer, but the pressures of life, many things around you, and you are fallen astray, you want to rededicate your life back to Jesus. Please lift your hand. Lift your right hand. I pray with you right now and we are done. God bless you. I see a hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If your right hand is up, I want you to walk to the front quickly. You want to surrender to Jesus today, Resurrection Sunday. You want to rededicate your life back to Him again. Please walk to the front quickly, quickly. My lifetime. I will give up my life. I'm still waiting for you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Jesus is calling you. My life. I will give up my life. If I give if I give up my life. He will take care. Jesus is calling you to come back to him, to be restored to him on this resurrection Sunday. Say yes to him and no to sin. Say yes to him and no to death. Please put your right hand on your chest, those of you in front, and those of you who are being convicted in your heart where you are, please join them quickly. Before we say amen. Those of you in front, put your right hand on your chest. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I give you my heart. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Can we all stretch our hands towards them, Father? As they return back to you, I ask that from today your eternal life will live in them i declare that their sins are forgiven and they are born again new creatures in christ jesus they will grow to love you and serve you all the days of their lives fill them with your spirit let their lives never remain the same in jesus name